Hi, I'm Marilyn. Welcome to my studio. I love to make art and I love to help other people make art, especially those of you who say, I can't. I think if we keep it simple, we can make learning how to make art lots of fun and very satisfying and productive at the same time. I have some good tips for beginners and things that experienced artists may find helpful as well. So come on, let's go see what's happening today. In this video, we're going to deal with page fright, also known as precious paper paralysis or blank space phobia, or just plain old fear of messing up. It's that feeling of panic you get when you're faced with a blank page in your beautiful sketchbook and perhaps very expensive sketchbook. Well, I'm going to share five tips with you for pushing through the panic and getting to the fun and stick around to the end because I have a bonus tip. Tip number one, give yourself permission to create. You can make your very own creative license on the first page of your sketchbook or drop it in your basket where you keep your sketching supplies. At the very least, hang it over your work table as a constant reminder that you have every right to play and play by its very nature is messy. You can also use an artist's affirmation to fill some of that gorgeous white space. I know acrylic artists who actually write with paint on their canvas an affirmation that guides them through their work and they paint right over top of it and that very personal message is embedded in their work and kind of guides them. One of my favorite affirmations is from Erica Lancaster. It is, I am proud of my work and its wonderfully unique characteristics. Check out Erica's website, ericalancaster.com, where you can download a free PDF of these 10 affirmations for artists. Tip number two, make a mess. This is one of my favorites. I love to grab a sketchbook and just turn to random pages Throw some paint on it, scribbles, splotches, splatters, uh, color combinations. You never know what's gonna happen. I let the page dry, I close them up, and it's so much fun to open up to a page that's already started for me. Then you can use a pen or a marker to draw right on top of your background. The bicycles in this sketch were drawn on a page that I had messed up long before I ever did the drawing. I've even used this technique in studio work. There are days when I really want to paint, but I don't know what to paint, so I just grab some paper and uh, make messes. And I might make a stack of four or five or six messes, and I let them dry and stick them away someplace. And the next time I'm thinking I want to paint something, I pull those out, and sometimes they're the inspiration for a new painting. I looked at this and I thought, I think there's a flamingo in that, and darned if there wasn't, there he is. So go make a mess. It sure takes away that fear of a blank page. Tip number three, divide and conquer. Another way to get over your fear of the white space is to cut it up into smaller pieces. In other words, add a grid or a border that makes all this territory a little more manageable, then you can fill in smaller sections at your leisure. I love the surprise of turning to a, to a page and finding that it's no longer blank. Dory Cantor, who is author of Art Escapes, has a couple of ideas that I really like. One is to draw a window frame. At some point in time, you can come back and add the view. Another idea that Dory shares in her book, Art Escapes, is to create what she calls a creative matrix. Categories down the side, times, places across the top, <clears throat> and then what happens at the intersection. So in this case, I did Saturday, Sunday. This was a creative matrix for a weekend. Sights, sounds, scents. Again, just another way of helping you get over that fear of a blank page. I've put the link to Dory's book, Art Escapes, in the description below. Tip number four, embrace happy accidents. 
Yes, I really did set my coffee cup down on top of my sketchbook, my very expensive store-bought sketchbook. Hey, my response, I meant to do that. I've had other happy accidents. Uh, my fountain pen has leaked uh, in the most inopportune places, or I've chosen colors that turn to mud. And I think you just have to adopt the attitude that your sketchbook is your lab and everything in it is an experiment. Stuff happens, it's all good. So I'm still thinking about what I can do with these coffee rings. Tip number five, make your own sketchbook. This was a game changer for me and I really think it's probably the best way to conquer precious papers, paralysis. If for no other reason, then you can make your own sketchbook for pennies compared to what you would pay for a store-bought version. This was my first homemade sketchbook. Um, I made it with uh, five by seven sheets of watercolor paper, two book rings, and some leftover plastic that came from an old folder. I wanted to be able to delete a page if I goofed up. And I wanted to be able to add more pages if and when I ever filled this. Well, needless to say, I have filled it several times, front and back. Uh, I have all the previous pages and I just add new ones uh, when I need more, need more room to sketch. Remember the copy paper zine that we made in a previous video? Now, one sheet of copy paper, that's hardly intimidating. We also, made a sketchbook from a brown shopping bag. Again, using recycled paper is a great way to take some of the preciousness out of it. And I'm gonna show you in an upcoming video how to make three gorgeous sketchbooks from one sheet of high quality watercolor paper. So stay tuned for that one. In the meantime, find some paper, make a sketchbook and go fill it. I promised you a bonus tip. Here's one more idea for conquering page fright. Create your own think outside the box pages throughout your sketchbook. I honorably adopted this from classroom teachers who use it as a Thursday morning brain teaser. Here's how this goes. Make some lines, add a rule, and go for it. Check Pinterest for best think outside the box Thursday ideas you'll have plenty to fill your sketchbook, and it's lots of fun to see what you end up with. That's it for this lesson. Please like if you found these tips helpful, and be sure to subscribe so you'll be first to hear about new videos uh, that show up on my channel, Marilyn Westcott Art. If you have questions, ask away in the comments section. I'll do my very best to answer. Stay tuned. Next video will be how to use small sketches to build a regular creative practice. Thanks for watching. See you soon.